Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. Welcome to your show. I'm Ellie Bierman, and I'm your guide to demystifying your world. Today, you're joining us at Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. If you've not yet done so, please rate and review our show. And it's really easy to do over on our website. There are directions that you'll see and the link will be in the show notes. Our review of the week comes from Jumblebug. Uh, love your passion, Ellie. This is a great podcast sharing the truth of our medical system today that offers only one path to healing when we know there are so many more as when we tune into our body. It will guide us if we're open Thanks for sharing your journey and for now helping others, Allie. That there couldn't have been a more perfect one for our very special guest today. We are chatting with Dr. Karen Can. She's somebody I follow everywhere where she is online. And you're going to want to do so after you get a taste of who she is, what she knows, and more importantly, which she shares in ways you can actually understand and apply. So before jumping into the show, there's a quick reminder to join our book club to deepen your dive into the world of the invisible, to empower you to finally make those life changes that you know you really and truly dream of. Dr. Karen Ken is a doctor of light medicine, a number one international best-selling author, visionary, and pioneer in the fields of healing, consciousness, and spirituality. Her mission is to empower spiritually conscious people to harness their intuitive healing and manifesting superpowers so they can reach their highest vibration and help anchor in a brand new reality of love, joy, peace, and harmony for all. As the founder of the Academy of Light Medicine, Dr. Karen teaches students her three-step Topakan healing method, which involves aligning with the source of divine wisdom, asking quality questions through divine muscle testing, and activating high vibrational healing frequencies. She's like a Yoda from Star Wars, training you to be a self-healing master Jedi. Now, Dr. Karen started as an Olympic gold medal figure skater, turned family physician. Yes, she's an actual board certified MD and then became certified as an acupuncturist before opening the field of energy in a way that we can actually understand, comprehend and apply the invisible, which is what this show is all about. I feel so honored to share you with everybody today. And I welcome you to our show, Dr. Karen. Hi, Allie. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, I'm very honored also to be on your show. And your, your story is just amazing and so inspirational. And I love connecting with inspirational people. Uh, just as a little correction, a lot of people think that I'm an Olympic medalist, but I'm not. I'm actually a world champion, yes but in adult figure skating, meaning that, you know, I don't do triples or I'm still working on my doubles. Um, adult figure skating are people that often will start late in life. I started at the age of 29. Um, so I have won probably 15 or 17, something like that medals over the 20 something years that I've skated because now I'm in my mid fifties. Um, and uh, so, but thank you very much for <laughs> Exactly. So I just want to make sure that people go, well, I didn't see her at the Olympics. I'm like, no, I wasn't at the Olympics. And I laugh and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe the old age Olympics, <laughs> they have one of those. I think they're called masters or something like that. I, I might be at those one of those one of those days. And uh, yeah. And, and as far as yeah, I'm a medical doctor, like you said, um, I chose to let go of my board certification 
Uh, I was board certified and basically, you know, the test that they have us do every, whatever it is, eight or 10 years, um, it was really about memorizing pharmaceuticals, you know, and, and the funny thing is the last time I did do my board certification, I noticed a really interesting pattern. One was they were asking about all the newest drugs and what they did. And I was not up to snuff on that, honestly, because I didn't use them. <laughs> And that was in my medical, you know, holistic medical practice. And the second piece was that everything that had to do with a vitamin or natural healing, they were maligning during the exam. It'd be like, what is the disease? You know, what disease do you get when you overdo B6? I'm like, really? Nobody does that. Right. And, and I'm like, that is so rare. Like, why are they putting this on the exam? It's like to, it's like to condition medical doctors to believe that this is a common condition where people overuse vitamins, they can get sick, it can kill them, right? As opposed to the 400,000 plus deaths, uh, you know, uh, of, of per year of people who use pharmaceuticals properly and still die from it. So <laughs> I was, I was, I love to learn. So I was listening to the Wise Traditions podcast today. They were interviewing the people who made the movie about drugs in the mental health community. And it's like all the things you just said, which I'm sure you know. And I want to thank you for being true to yourself and for always standing for the truth. And I'm so grateful that when Facebook said bye-bye, which they did to pretty much everybody I was following, right? Um, that you were able to have your own community where Facebook has nothing to do with you. So uh, I'd love to be able to put that link in our show notes also. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, we just, you know, I just opened up the Health Freedom Tribe community um, uh, and, and there's just a few of us in there for now. And every week we get together, we have a chat. We talk about what's going on in the world, what's going on in their world, my world, and uh, the ways we're navigating through this uh, pandemic and whatever else, you know, shows up. And it's all part of spiritual growth and connection and community. And so we have a lot of fun, even though there's just a few of us. And, uh, you know, Facebook's interesting. I don't have any negative uh, feelings around Facebook. Uh, I know what it does. I know what it does not do. And I also realize that if I really want my voice heard, I mean, I don't own Facebook. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do I really have a say in how it should run? Nah, probably not. So I kind of left that uh, there. But I realized that there is a way in which I've been when I do get censored is often when I'm sharing other people's stuff, like memes and things like that from those that are censored. And what I figured out with Facebook most of the time is if I tell a story about my vulnerability, my errors as a medical doctor, what I learned through my own illness, uh, that they don't censor that, even if it alludes to, you know, things that people are getting censored for, because I'm talking about me. So I thought, okay, good to know. Good to know that formula. <laughs> you have to learn the hard way sometimes. <laughs> wow. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I had a friend lose, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of videos when one of the companies shut her down. It's like, right. Wow. Right. It, it, yeah. It's uh, and the thing is that the the so-called powers that be, um, they're really to some degree are focusing on healers and wellness practitioners now more than ever before. And at the same time, it's like, well, duh, that's where the power is, right? Like <laughs> in that community. So, so they're trying to get a rise out of us, and so we give them what they want when we have a rise out of it. Uh, instead, what I like to do is um, go, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so how do I circumvent that? How do I, how do I make an impact even though I don't have that avenue or platform or whatever it is? And what's really amazing is I've just, just through my own experience, learned new things, new tech, new people. Um, and it's like that persistency of just keep going, keep going. Oh, there's an obstacle. Okay, we're going to figure out something out and then just keep going, keep going. And so that kind of determination and tenacity and perseverance is something that we in this light energy love space, um, it, you know, we can model that for everyone else. And that's what I determined to do. But you're my robot model in just every way you can imagine. And that's one thing I learned is just keep saying yes and moving forward. 
Yeah, and and that yes is is I call it a sacred yes, right? Like a sacred yes to whatever the universe prevents, uh, sorry, presents to us, um, instead of resisting it, because resistance and reactivity are the two key, let's say, blocks that mm -hmm. humans can come across in making a difference in their own life and others. Yeah, that that's a big one that I'm endeavoring I don't think I succeeded yet my friends who are in a lot of pain and just offering the difference between resistance and welcoming and well I believe you know through you through me through a lot of other people the message is getting out there and I believe in divine timing when it's the right moment for them to see it'll be like ah which brings me to when I was on your website today and Epic Adventure Seekers, you want to take your time. You want to see everything on Dr. Karen's website because there's a lot of information. There are a lot of programs, but here's what woke me up today. I've written 80 books. I've made, I don't know how many courses. And ever since the brain surgery in 2011, I haven't been offering any of it. And I thought, holy mackerel, a lot of good it does people sitting on my five hard drives instead of offering it to people who are looking for this. So that's something else I thank you for because, wow, I've never seen so much stuff on one website is what you have there. <laughs> Well, it's part of who I am, and sometimes it can be overwhelming to, to people, and that's okay. We don't have to apologize for our personalities and who we are, and definitely, you have a lot of wisdom, and uh, I think it's wonderful to, I'm so glad that uh, that somehow there was an inspiration there to start sharing your wisdom in a bigger way, so that's really cool for me to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so glad because I needed that wake-up call, so would you please share um, your book that sensitivity is your superpower? How did you come to that realization? And why does it matter to know that about oneself? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel that um, it's been such a great gift to me to have, uh, have gone through what people call the dark night of the soul. Uh, like, you know, you've gone through that as well, you know, where we are sometimes, you know, physically ill and sick and, and uh, desperate, de depressed, <laughs> went through all of that, autoimmunity, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, allergies, intolerances. I mean, I couldn't be in the same room as someone with a smartphone without literally feeling like I was you know, the witch from the Wizard of Oz, melting, melting, I'm melting, you know, it was awful. So um, I came to really appreciate that, uh, that I was highly sensitive uh, ever since childhood. My mom was as well. I think my brothers as well, although don't tell him I said that on the um, radio show. Anyway, <laughs> he doesn't listen to them, so we're good. <laughs> He'll never find out. Um, yeah, so I, it's interesting how, you know, growing up, um, my mom was really made fun of by my, my dad, um, who felt like she was overly sensitive and, um, she got criticized for it and made fun of. And then when my brother grew up, despite the fact that he's a sensitive soul as well, he kind of got into a hardened state and also started making fun of my mom. And, uh, so that, you know, I didn't like that growing up. So I wanted to be everything but that. I wanted to be tough, you know, I wanted to be a Kung Fu fighter and, you know, all this kind of cool superhero because I felt vulnerable and I felt like I wasn't enough and I was weak, um, you know, I was bullied in school and uh, I was different. There wasn't a lot of, you know, Asians at that time in school where I lived. So it was this constant bullying and uh, this sensitivity that I pretty much pretended I didn't have actually you know, really bit me in the butt, so to speak, in medical school, because the physical rigors of medical school really got me um, days without sleep, you know, all that studying and learning and learning and learning and, and being with uh, people who were very sick and they were very depressed and very, um, you know, very much in pain, both psychologically. I started taking that on as a sensitive person. I didn't realize 
then I started taking it on. I took it on as a responsibility. I took it on as a responsibility to cure them, help them, support them in any way. And so I started layering all the stress on me, not knowing that it would affect my physical body. And hence, that's where, you know, I became sick after many, many years of this constant stress. And so when I realized later on, as I healed myself, I healed myself you know, over two years from the fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, found a lot of tools and teachers and things that I attracted to myself. Uh, I started realizing that a lot of people who were attracted to me in my holistic medical practice were also highly sensitive. In fact, probably 95%, <laughs> hence the law of attraction thing, right? Like they were attracted to who I was. And then I thought, well, there, there are so many talents that they have and so many gifts. They just think there's something wrong with them. So I was seeing over and over again, there's nothing wrong with you. This is a gift, you know, reframing how they felt, especially the young people who felt that they had to take medications for their quote unquote ADD or whatever it is, depression, anxiety. It saddened me so much to see these young children on drugs that, and by the way, the drug company never did uh, clinical so safety studies or, or you know, um, double blank placebo control trials for long periods of time for these psychiatric medications. They just assumed, you know, well, kind of works for adults, so we'll just apply it to children. It's called an off label use. So people don't realize when children are being prescribed prescription medications as an off-label use for the most part. That's like saying, well, you can't use hydroxychloroquine for the you-know-what because it's an off-label use. I'm like, hello, there's 60 years of safety studies. We give it to women, children, you know, uh, pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and elderly, and it's safe. Oh, but it's an off-label use. I'm like, hello, you're using off-label uses for a whole bunch of things, including these psychiatric medications, right? So I started sharing this over and over again with my patients and thinking, you know, <laughs> I really need to, uh, this is a little slow. There must be a better way of doing that. So I created a five-day workshop called the Light Warrior Training Camp, where I was training people in person. And we still have that to this day. And then the pandemic hit. Uh, and I thought, well, it must be time to put it in a book format because people cannot fly to see me or I can't fly there to do the, the training. So I put that five-day workshop in the book. Uh, so that it would be highly accessible to people, you know, whether they want a digital form or, you know, get it off uh, on online books or whatever it is. So at least more people can really realize that there's nothing wrong with them. Their sensitivity, which is 30% of the population, is actually their gift. And if we step into that and own it, then we can do amazing things like transformational telepathy. We can change the weather. Uh, we can put positive transmutational bubbles around someone who's very negative so their negativity doesn't infect us or other people we love so lots of really cool things that's why I wrote it that's that's such a gift to everybody and you reminded me because I've been working with energy for decades and there was a friend of mine they needed to move the water that was flowing around their property, it wasn't flowing through pipes, it was just a natural flow. So we all focused our energy and we moved where that stream, whatever it was underground was flowing. So it's, it's not woo woo stuff, it's reality. And I can look at my life. I have extraordinary stories that seem absolutely impossible, but they're real and I know that. And I talk with the universe, with my guides and my angels all the time. Otherwise, I don't know how I live moment to moment. So, um, I think now might be a good time to take a sponsor break. So if you're ready to finally get unstuck, it's not as hard as you think when you know what's keeping you stuck. My book was a bestseller for 15 months and it's been selling regularly for 20 years and I have never, ever advertised it at all. It's a simple short read that makes a difference. So if you're wondering what your world looks like every day, the same day after day after day, the thing is, you know what you know, you know what you don't know but you don't know what you don't know. And that's what keeps you stuck. Do you know how your brain and your mind keep you stuck? I made a very special offer for you, my epic adventure listeners. And I made the audio as well as 
a, a, a digital copy of the book that has a special bonus in it that the other copy doesn't have. And you can get them, the link will be in the show notes. You can get that set for just nine ninety seven, And it has changed. I know it's been over hundreds. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's in the thousands of lives that has changed. So I want to get back um, to you again, Dr. Karen. You are so generous with your time and with your energy. And I was really happy to see that you and your husband do the skating and the West African drumming, which I got to do when I lived in Boise, Idaho. And it's just really, really cool. And it would look to those of us looking from the outside like you work all the time but you're really, really well-rounded. And I'm wondering, could you share with us what a typical day is like for you? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I don't often get asked that. And the funny thing is, is I just started this, as you know, this YouTube series called Healthy Habits, Healthy Life. And I thought, you know, if I actually went through a whole day and documented everything that I did, especially the healthy habits part, it'd probably be a little overwhelming for the average person going, well, I can't do that. So that's why I started doing like a, a weekly uh, um, video on just one aspect of those, you know, things. And it also keeps me accountable, <laughs> right? Because I'm doing a video about it. I'm like, well, this is a healthy habit. I'm going to keep this up, right? If I'm going to tell other people to do it. So it's actually been helpful for me as well. Um, one of the things that uh, people don't know, and I'm going to share with you, you know, you and your audience, maybe for the first time, people that follow me are healing or hearing rather, is that um, when I wake up, first of all, I love sleeping. <laughs> I love sleeping. So I've always loved sleeping ever since I was a kid. I love sleeping. And I used to have insomnia and having trouble getting to sleep. And now I have various different, you know, thoughts and, and tools and things like that. So I can fall asleep and be stay asleep much easier. Is when I open my eyes, um, I actually sometimes I'll feel into the body and uh I had this or had this tendency of being really, really, really sensitive to pain and discomfort. So I find that it's really helpful for me. I have a little vibrating peanut. It's like to roll your back, but I actually use it under my knees and I'll actually, as I'm waking up, I'll actually, you know, turn that on and put it under my knee or knees or my, even my calf muscle. And I'll just let it vibrate me. And also because I can feel um, energy moving in my body better when it stops. And that gets me into that stillness through observing internal movement, uh, which is a meditation practice of mine. So I do that throughout the day, but it kind of starts off like that. So I, you know, do the little peanut vibration thing. Oftentimes if the dog comes into the room to wake me up, I'll put him on the bed and pet him while I'm you know, doing some healing work. So then I start doing healing work on whoever or whatever is I'm called to do. Oftentimes it's uh, star seed uh, light beings that I am in um, community with, uh, all of humanity. Uh, I have people in the healing basket. These are folks that are family friends who've given me permission as well as my current VIP clients. Um, so they get like a mini healing from me every day. And I, I kind of do all of that. And if I do all of that first, I notice that my biology and physiology works better that day. And then as I get up, um, I'm doing a new habit, which is drinking 16 ounces of Himalayan crystal salt, you know, water. I put a little pinch in there and just drink because I drinking water has been eh, kind of a challenge for me. So I just do that right away as soon as, you know, I'm done bathrooming, whatever, <laughs> and um, putting that in. And then I have a bulletproof uh, coffee, uh, decaf coffee in the morning. Um, I, you know, I. Uh, not every morning, but most mornings we'll make this fabulous mold-free decaf coffee and then put in some keto creamer, collagen creamer, you know, certain brands. I keep experimenting, but I really like a couple of different brands. And that's my yummy treat. You know, after my one big, huge 20 ounce thing of water, that's my treat. And then I chat there with, you know, um, my husband in the morning. And some, some mornings are different. Like some mornings I have like CrossFit or other exercises to do. Uh, other times it's, um, you know, 10 o'clock and, the, and then I start my sessions with people, whether it be a meeting or a synergy interview or my, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. And then sometimes I have, you know, certain days of the week I have podcasts. 
that I record and other days of the week I create. So I create, you know, my weekly YouTube video and uh, programs for future telesummits and things like that. And pretty much every day, my husband and I are now doing block therapy. Um, before it was me, but I got him turned on to that. So that's been really fun to do together and be in pain together <laughs> as we're releasing our, our fascia. And, uh, and then of course they're skating, right? Although I don't skate as much as I used to. Uh, um, very, very busy right now. And they had a whole time where they required masks and I just, you know, boycotted the rink for that time. So we're back to skating now that they've gotten rid of that. And so we do that once, you know, once a week. And then we have our little doggy walks outdoors. And uh, I can definitely tell when, once I'm outdoors, I'm like, oh, I needed to be out here. <laughs> you know, like, and I always say hello. I say, hello, forest angels and fairies and everyone out here. Hello, sky. Hello, air. I mean, if neighbors were ever to see me say that, they'd think I was nuts. But I would just go there and talk, talk to everything and all the forest spirits out there and have a nice little walk. And uh, yeah, and uh, so that's pretty much my day. And occasionally I'll be working late into the evening because I just love what I do. <laughs> uh, and uh, other times we'll be, you know, watching a superhero movie or something like that. And then usually I'm blocking while I'm doing that. So doing two things at once. So there's lots of different, you know, self-care things that, that I do. And I think that's like my number one value is, is that self-care and evolution piece. That's really cool. Thank you for saying that because I spend a good part of every day on self-care, my morning meditation and gratitude. And uh, I'm an ordained minister, so I have what I call my blessings. So I do family and friends and anybody who I, I know needs some help. And I always ask before I send any energy or anything. And then I notice if I then get up and I do, like I, I learned from David Schmidt, I never heard of Tabata before. I just, I, I love him. I learned so many extraordinary things from him. And if I do my Qigong in the morning, it sets up a much different day than if I wait until later in the day to do it. Which brings me back to your Healthy Habits video the uh, about the fascia I never thought about the tongue and the fascia I have a special course just for TMJ because your TMJs is connected to your ankle to your knees to everything I didn't know that about the tongue so when I lost the nerve in that surgery where more than half of my tongue is still paralyzed and thankfully some of the stem cells are have given me back some feeling, but I'm watching the video and I'm thinking, oh, no wonder I have all this stuff going on. And just because of the healing modalities that I've been in for decades, putting the tongue on the roof of the mouth, that was one of the first things that I learned. So I've been hmm. doing it all these years without knowing why, but I study Chinese medicine which if you have any books to recommend, that'd be great because I get to study with whatever my Qigong teachers are sharing with that. So I recommend guys going out and finding Dr. Karen and looking at those healthy habits because they're short little videos, like uh, she said, on very specific things and they'll make you aware of oh, wow, I can do this differently in my life. So we are, those of us who are like me, who are very fond of everything you do, <laughs> I'm so glad that you come forth and you speak up. And I'm wondering what is the best way for people to find you? Um, well, you know, I have a special um, book bonus launch. Uh, so there's a couple different ways. Uh, if they go to KarenCan.com, that's, that's, that's just my name, K-R-E-N-K-A-N.com. Right near the top is a little banner, encourages people to uh, buy the book. And with that, you get a, you know, what is valued at $1,000 for gifts from me and my colleagues and friends that are in the healing and spiritual growth world. Um, including some healing MP3s and instructions and things like that. So 
uh, whether you buy the book from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or a physical bookstore, or you get it as an ebook from my site, um, you can just put in your order number uh, and get access to that free page. And a lot of people um, who didn't know me started doing just some of the MP3s. Like I have something called the Sensitive Soul Rescue Remedy. So they just started listening to that or watching that and doing the directives themselves and noticed a huge difference in just not being as overwhelmed, you know, being more grounded, being more settled, more calm. So that was really cool to hear. So that's like one of the first things that I tell people to check out is, you know, get a copy of the book uh, because you, if you're interested at all in Ali, your podcast, like I think most of the people that you um, are helping are in this one third of the population, the sensitive soul conscious people. So I think it's great to have, um, you know, some extra skill sets. And, and then I'd love for people to, you know, if it resonates what's in the book and you want to learn more, definitely um, by being on my mailing list, we have a monthly mini healing every single month that you can, you know, get healing demonstrations and you could, you know, receive. Um, and then you can follow me on my videos that I make every uh, week, the Spiritual Medicine Digest plus a healthy habits, healthy life. And then I will have that five day in person again, uh, training the Light Warrior Training Camp. Uh, and we're planning, I believe, September of this year. So by then, I believe most of the, uh, at least the masking mandates will have dropped in the country, in the U.S. And so folks can travel a little bit easier uh, and I'd love to meet everybody in person because it's so fun <laughs> to be together for that week and to share everybody's energy and I because of your book I became aware of I was always sensitive and it was my role in the family to take care of everybody even uh -huh. a really little kid yes so I remember when I did Landmark Forum as an adult, because it woke me up <laughs> to the stories I was telling myself, my daughter said, Mom, I want what you did. And she went and did it because That's great. it's never said anything to me. But they said, Mommy used to be so sensitive, as in getting your feelings hurt easily. So yeah, and I would tune in to people and feel what they were feeling and yep. realizing I was taking on their stuff. Let me ask you something. When I work on somebody, I know I'm not doing the work. It's coming through me. And I have so much of love pouring through me. I get high when I work on a person. And I'm pretty sure I have all my boundaries and plays and my energy, and I'm aware of all that. So I'm pretty sure I'm not letting anybody take it from me. And I wondered what your take would be on that. Well, in, in the healing methodology that I've created called the Topican Healing Method, uh, one of the things we do is after we do that alignment piece, you know, we align with source. Uh, whether that be you feeling that that love pouring through you, or I do it through a technique in chapter four in my book called Stillness Through Observing Internal Movement, then we can ask specific questions around it. So I do from time to time check um, all seven of my boundaries, physical, mental, emotional, energetic, spiritual, dimensional, and uh, relational, and just check in to make sure that they're all 100%. And nowadays, given that uh, we have what I call a timeline convergence, uh, we sometimes will be able to determine in our alternate selves or alternate or dimensional, which is other lives, past lives, future lives, that sometimes we have things going on in those realities that can decrease our boundaries. So in Topic and Healing, we actually go and do the intention and healing for all of our timelines. We're allowed, you know, simultaneously so that if I get my boundary is 100% in all those different areas, then I'm like good to go. Um, so I don't check it every single day because I do do stoem or stillness through observing internal movement every day. And that automatically fortifies the boundaries. And here's the other thing is one of the reasons why our boundaries seem to seem to, I say, uh, seem to go down is not because they go down. It's because we're expanding. So source is expanding. Everything's expanding. Some people call it the ascension process. So if you can imagine it like a balloon, it's like when your balloon expands, what happens to the balloon walls? They get a little thin, right? 
-hmm. And and so what we're doing with this, um, you know, boundary assessment and therefore healing is that we're just uh, creating a healthier boundary with that expansion that we have, restoring boundaries um, and, and making them not necessarily fortified like a like a wall. <laughs> it's more like we want that healthy relationship with everything else, everyone and everything else. So our boundaries can be fluid and 100% strong at the same time. So hopefully I kind of got that idea across. Wow, it's just, I could listen to you all day long. I, I've learned, I assume everybody listening learned a whole lot from you today. And everybody's anxious to go over to your website and check out what else is there. Is there one particular message? Because you've shared a whole lot today. Is there one message you'd like to be really sure that all of our listeners hear and hopefully apply today? Uh, well, my number one go-to day in and day out, whether I'm having a perfect day or not so perfect day, is to tune in to what I call the stillness. And it's not what I traditionally thought it was. So I tried so many years to meditate and, and do what my teachers suggested I did, but I just it just never stuck, Allie, because I just, I, I like to be busy. <laughs> And the idea of sitting there for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I just couldn't do it. And then I felt bad about myself because I couldn't do it. But then I found a different way of tuning in and really connecting to source and the zero point field throughout my day for seconds at a time. And so that is the stillness through observing internal movement. Um, and that's what I love to teach. And if people don't even want to get the book or get chapter four, you, you can definitely get the freebie training, which is at stillnessonthefly.com. And uh, just experience it for yourself, try it out, you know, um, see if it works for you. Normally it's just seconds at a time and people have that feeling of, oh, I need to be really good at it. And no, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> it's just like anything else, we, we practice that. So I still, if I get upset or, or something triggers me, I go into that stillness or observing internal movement and feel the movement of the trigger or the negative emotion or whatever is going through me. So I just found that was the quickest, fastest way to resolve whatever it is that needs to resolve. And it also automatically restores your boundaries. When you do that practice, it automatically puts you into a healing um, uh, state. And third of all, that positive healing state actually helps people around you as well. We call that the light radius. So if there's one thing that I would highly suggest everyone at least make an attempt on is unless you happen to love meditating for 30, 40, 60, three hours at a time, good for you. If you don't, then try out the stillness through observing internal movement or the stillness on the fly process because uh, everyone that has tried it, who's, who's really you know had difficulty with meditating have gotten a lot out of it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Cause I definitely know some people who can't sit still. So we'll definitely put that link in the show notes also. And I thank you, thank you, thank you again for being you just the way you are and for sharing you. Thank you so much, Ali. And thanks everyone for listening in and tuning in. Yes. And I also thank you for listening, being here with us today. And I want to remind you to join our Facebook group, ask questions, make a new friend, stay up with what's going on and any special offers there in the group. Take advantage of the very special offer for the book and audio. Join our book club. And the link for that and everything else is in the show notes. Remember to enjoy every moment. That's capital I and capital J O Y, because everything in your world happens within. It's within your head and your body that you see, that you hear, that you taste. It's in your body that you're touching. So in Enjoy every moment, and I'll see you here next time.